In this video, I'll be talking about 22 of my favorite workshop tools and gadgets, most of which are under 30 pounds, and all of which have been tried and tested by me and work well for the kind of work that I do. Christmas is coming, and this video might help you with some gift ideas, either for yourself or for the makers in your life. Links to all of the products I talk about will be included in the description box below, and most of them will be affiliate links which help to support my channel. I'm going to start with three things that I always have with me while I'm working. Here's a tool that I first saw on Thomas Johnson's Antique Restoration YouTube channel, so I commented on the video asking what it was. This is a scraper by Barco, which is now one of my most reached for tools. So much so that I now keep it hooked on my trousers while I'm working because it also comes with this useful holster. The standard blade is the triangular one, which has three edges so you can rotate when one gets dull. And there are two other shaped blades available for it to buy separately, although I don't have those. The carbide blade holds an edge really well. Mine is still sharp and I've used it loads. It's very comfortable to use, great for scraping wood, removing finish or paint. It's very useful and I don't think I could be without it anymore. The second thing I always have with me while I'm working is this tape measure by Fisco. Good quality, small and compact so I can keep it in my pocket without it being a nuisance. And it's three meters long, which is plenty long enough for the work that I do in the workshop. And it's metric only, and I realize that some people won't like that, but for me it's great because you don't have to rotate it to measure accurately in millimeters. It's almost the perfect tape measure, and I say almost because it'd be even better if it had markings on both the back of the tape as well as the front. But having looked around, I don't think a small metric only tape measure with markings on both sides exists, but feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong and you know of one. The one I have here doesn't seem to be available anymore, so the links I've provided below are for what I presume is a newer version of this one. The third thing that I always carry with me while I'm working is this Stanley pocket knife. Great for marking up joints, although I use mine for all sorts of other things too, and I just keep resharpening the disposable blades because I'm a bit of a cheapskate. It works great, and it has space on the inside of the case for a spare blade too. For replacement blades, I'd recommend not buying the official Stanley ones and instead going for the Swan Morton blades, which you can buy on eBay. I'll leave information for that below too. Those blades are much cheaper and they work just as well as the official ones. While I'm talking about knives, here's one that I carry around with me all of the time. This is actually on my set of keys. This is the Spyderco Micro Knife. It's really nice to always have a knife on hand for opening packages. Also comes in handy if you like to salvage things when you're out and about. This one isn't the cheapest, but it's really great quality and it's very sharp and holds a good edge. Here's a tool that I get asked about all of the time. This is the Wixie Digital Angle Gauge. Great for setting the angle of a table saw and miter saw blade, which is what I use it for most frequently, but there are loads of other uses too, such as checking band saw table tilt, sanding disc table. I've even checked my framing squares for accuracy, and if I need to find out an unknown angle directly from my bevel gauge, I can do that too. It works well, quick, easy, and certainly accurate enough for the work that I do. Next is another Barco product, and it's another scraper too, but a card scraper this time, which is a tool that I use a lot in my work. I like this one because it's a good size, it's quite long, which means it takes less effort to flex it, and the edge retention on this one is really good, much better than the one I had previously. Great for scraping off old finish or cleaning up any wood grain tear out. It's one of my favorite tools, and I've got a video all about the card scraper too, which I'll link to below. Next is these ratchet straps made by Wolfcraft, and I've had some bad experiences with some of their products in the past, to be honest, but these ratchet straps have been great, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll have seen me using these for glue-ups. Before I got these, I was using band clamps, and I didn't really like them because they don't work that well in my opinion, certainly not the ones that I have anyway. The ratchet straps though are really strong and you can pull in joints really tight and they seem really strong and robust. All of the components are made of metal. Something else you might have seen me use a lot in my video are these digital calipers by MIB. I get asked about these calipers quite a lot and I suspect that's because some of the cheaper digital calipers that you can buy, some of the Chinese made ones, 
don't work very well, they're not very accurate. And the problem that I had with my old cheap set of calipers was that the battery would corrode inside the body, so they were just useless. I think these ones by MIB are really well priced for what they are. I mean, I've been using them for probably three years or more and they've been perfect. They're very accurate and they're very repeatable too. You can spend hundreds of pounds on a good quality set of digital calipers, but for me, these have been great, and if anything happened to them, I would definitely buy the same ones again. Next, a couple of products that were sent to me from a company called TacLife. I didn't pay for these, just to be upfront about it. A laser measure and a moisture meter. I don't use these regularly for the work that I do, but when I need them, they're useful to have and they work great. The laser measure is very accurate. I've tested it against a tape measure and it's bob on. The moisture meter has been useful for things like checking the salvaged oak and mahogany, which I got a few months back, because it had been left in a big pile out in the elements and it's been interesting to see the readings drop steadily over time and then rise and fall as the seasons change. Next is an electric pencil sharpener, which is a handy thing to have around the workshop and it gives me a perfect point every time. This one isn't the greatest quality to be honest, it's a bit plasticky, but it was nice and cheap and it does the job just fine. Next is this Evolution electric file and I didn't pay for this either, it was sent to me for free from Evolution for me to use in my videos. This comes in very useful when you don't have a bobbin sander because you can reach into all sorts of nooks and crannies and it removes material extremely quickly on its maximum speed setting. The speed is adjustable and the head is adjustable too to different angles. Certainly not something I use in every project but when you need one it's great to have. Here's something I got quite recently and I bought this because I was doing an installation where I needed to carry some sheet materials up a very narrow staircase. Carrying sheet materials around is always a bit awkward. It's not necessarily the weight but it's the size and this thing makes it really easy. It grips on really securely and the bit that does the gripping is rubberized too so it doesn't damage whatever it is that you're carrying. Next up is this wrecking bar. This is really useful for taking some pallets apart and I say some because I found that it doesn't work on all of them but I'm still glad that I bought it. If you want some tips on using this wrecking bar and other tools to dismantle pallets, check out a video by Matt from Badger Workshop which I'll link to in the description box below. He has some excellent tips. Next up is this blowtorch and I predominantly use this for heating up my branding iron to apply my maker's mark to my projects. But it's also good for charring wood if you like that kind of thing. This one is really inexpensive and best of all it came with multiple cans of gas. I've had mine for many months and I've used it a fair bit and I'm still only using the first can so they last pretty well. Next is this Ryobi cordless hot glue gun. There seems to be a real lack of good quality hot glue guns available to buy and there are even less cordless ones. This one by Ryobi is a big step up in terms of build quality to the ones I've had previously. It works really well and I'm pleased with it. But I should say that I didn't pay for this one using my own money either. This one was sent to me by Ryobi. We all know that a woodworker can never have enough clamps, but this set of 12 blue handled clamps from Amazon have been fantastic. Really impressed with them. When I first unboxed them, I thought that the smallest ones weren't going to be useful for anything, but actually I think they're probably the ones I've used the most. They're really great for clamping up those little things. When I first got them, they were a little bit stiff on the bar, but after a few months use, they now work really well. And I think they're a real bargain. Next up is this double headed mallet by Thor. This has a soft side and a hard side and these heads are replaceable too. Before getting this I used a wooden mallet and it was just a bit too big and cumbersome. This is really nice and compact and it's got a nice weight to it. And I've noticed that Paul Sellers actually uses this same mallet too in his videos. So what more of a reason do you need to buy one? Next up are these Sony Bluetooth wireless headphones. These work great for the workshop if you want to listen to music or a podcast while you're working. The sound quality is excellent. They're very comfortable. They've got this rubberized neck band. I really like them. Something else that I bought really recently is this respirator. And I couldn't believe it, but this comes with 20 replacement filters in the box. And it's really inexpensive. Previous to getting this one, I was using the Trend Air Ace, and that's quite an expensive respirator, but I've been really disappointed with it because the straps on it are really poor quality. You can see how twisted they are now, and I know I've used it a fair bit, but I just expected more at that price point. The straps on the new cheaper one are actually pretty good quality. They're nice and thick, and I think they'll last well, but even if they don't, at this price, I wouldn't begrudge just buying a new one. 
Next up is this Forstner bit set from Makita. Sizes ranging from 15 to 35 millimeters. Useful sizes and decent quality bits for not very much money. Another tool you might have seen me use a lot in my videos is this Ryoba, Ryoba, not sure how you say it, Japanese pull saw. I predominantly use this as a flush cut saw for trimming off dowels and that kind of thing. It works great for that, it cuts really well and the blades are actually replaceable too. I think that's just about all I've got for now. I hope you found this video useful. If you need any more inspiration for gift ideas, I'd suggest checking out a recent video that Peter Millard put out on the 10 Minute Workshop channel where he talks about some of the products that he holds in high regard. And I'll link to that video in the description box below. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.